Good lord. Welcome back, jerk. Uh, I got a question for you now that you're back. Is um is Barrett Banoff still week to week? Because he's uh, running out of weeks there. Uh, yeah, uh, considering there's 11 days left. All right. It's getting then. close. <laughs> Here we go. Hey now, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of The Pucknologist. You're only completely live, unfiltered, unedited, uncensored, and commercial-free Sharks podcast. Wrapping up the week in Sharks Harky. Hark? Harky? Hark? Who goes there? Harky. <laughs> <laughs> Part of Teal Town USA. Remember, if it's your first time checking out the cast, hit like and subscribe on the platform of your choice. And leave your takes in the comment section if you can't join us in that live chat. And remember, we're giving out stuff every show this season, and there's only a couple shows left. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> and I will have some things to say at the end of this one. Let me let you know. So let's go. Four games this week. The Sharks do exactly what we want, baby. Right where we want them. One and three. Four-two loss to the Kraken. Two-one loss to L.A., a 3-2 overtime winner in what would be uh, a pretty electric game. And I can sit there and say, hey, I was there. Does the uh, does that count for an AJ bump? We, we, <laughs> we can debate that. Uh, and then a 5-2 loss earlier today. Hell, what? Just about an hour and a half ago uh, versus Arizona. So here we are. Here we are. How are you feeling about them draft chances, brother? Well. <laughs> I feel good um, to quote James Brown. Yeah, I mean they they have the best chances, which it's as good as we can feel, right? Like there's nothing, Dude, there's nothing more. Eternal. Right, you know, there's nothing more the Sharks need to do to like really do anything to help us feel better, right? I mean, at this point, it's in the hands of <laughs> the random draw now, and uh, you know, we just have to hope that. Like it usually is, uh, having the best odds is um, indicative of who wins. Um, mm -hmm. Just got to, at this point, the Sharks, even if they win out, they're going to be in last place. So it's out of the Sharks' hands now, and it's in the hands of, you know, God or Lady Luck or Mother Nature, whoever you subscribe to. <laughs> and we'll Insert see. your fictitious deity here. Oh, man. How do you... How do you how do you like Blackwood starts three out of four games, Cooley starts one, and Cooley's the only one who gets a win this week? That's so sad. <laughs> Blackwood I, looked good, dude. I, like I thought Blackwood. it was nice for Cooley. Like, I legitimately felt great for him, you know? Oh, absolutely. After getting waxed twice by Chicago, of all teams, right? Well, and to have a lead squandered to Chicago twice as well. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah, but the Sharks are the kings of doing that this season. <laughs> right. Oof. Uh, so the, the Seattle game on Monday, I mean, it's, it's the usual sharks are out shot, although, um, they did win the special teams in the, in that game. So it's like, okay, small victories. Although, uh, dude, Eberle and Wright made Ferrara look like a donkey on that three on one goal <laughs> or three to one goal. It's like, woof. Uh, uh, but coasting, costing, however you want to go. Clem shady. He Clem keeps, shady. Yep. Chief keeps uh, getting racking up some points, dude. That for me, that's a keeper for next season. Just saying. Yeah, but, I mean, it was it was smart of them to look for a guy who has more than one year left, so you can really give him a long runway. Dude, I'm here for it. But uh, yeah, that Seattle game, dude. 29 seconds in, Bernier scores, and you're like, and we're done. <laughs> So we move on to the L.A. game, and, uh, you know, L.A. needed this one to keep the pressure on Vegas and try to keep the Blues at bay. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, and then, dude, you got to credit L.A., dude. They beat Seattle at home the night before. It's their third game in four nights. And Kings, uh, they held Seattle to 10 shots on goal through two periods the night before. So that's those are some taxing minutes when you're playing that heavy defense. Or is it just that Seattle sucks? Mm. Two things. Can I be think true. it's yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's a little bit of both, right? Just because, especially the position Seattle is in, they they have nothing to lose at this point. So why not try and make a uh, you know playoff team's life as hard as difficult as you can? And 
in the first period of that game they did. And then LA kind of blew the wheels off of them pretty quickly. So, you know, from the perspective of wanting the Sharks to be absolutely terrible, good on LA for beating the Kraken and then coming right in and beating the Sharks. <laughs> um, you know, because that's, whether we like it or not, that's what we need at this point, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, another game where the opponent gets more power play opportunities. The Sharks get outshot, of course. That's what happens. Um, well, again, if, you, if you're if you not good enough to be in a position to do anything, no one's taking a penalty on you. I'm saying it. <laughs> but, I mean, you look at the one game they won this week. That was the one where they won special teams, you know, killed five of six but scored on two of five, and it was the only game this week where they outshot their opponent. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, the L.A. game, dude, that, it's another one, again, somewhat indicative of how the season has gone is that they let in two quickies. Like, goals have come in bunches against the Sharks this season, and that's all it would take. And we gone. Right. So, uh, and this is what, okay, so uh, Clem Shady, again, <laughs> <laughs> with a pipe to skate to net goal <laughs> after Blackwood got pulled. That was... That was a really cool goal to see, to be quite honest. But uh, another thing that the Sharks seem to, um, I don't know, do better than any other team in the league is to give a guy their first NH goal, NHL goal. So, uh, uh, what, Akili or Akil Thomas? Akil Thomas, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you join an illustrious and very long list, my friend. Well, and sh- and just like kind of on the hockey side of things, like someone who was a highly touted prospect and has battled injuries and COVID Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So as a, as a purveyor of the sport and as somebody who wants people to be successful, like it's always nice when somebody can come back from something like that, you know? Oh, hell yeah. Uh, which we'll talk about in a little while. Cause, uh, we, we, uh, we have to talk about my boy stay lock Mm -hmm. talk about a guy who's had to come back from stuff. But anyway, Dude, big save Dave almost got his eighth career shutout. (laughs) (laughs) The Sharks stay at nine shutouts on this season. And I learned this week, the Sharks have never been shut out 10 times in a season. Hope springs eternal. Another record to be broken. I was going to say, not yet. (laughs) Give it time. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, how many left? Five left? Oh, man. Speaking of how many things are left. Oh, dude. And I, you know, I don't want to derail us too much, but I know you've looked at the schedule. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm running out of racetrack here on this <laughs> dude i am running out of racetrack short and, and i dude don't worry i have some notes to give you on that later <laughs> okay um so la held uh san jose to 16 shots despite as i said playing in la the night before third and four games meanwhile the sharks had been home since sunday and had the previous two days off <laughs> i love it um but the 49th time this season the sharks were held to two goals or fewer a franchise record and most in the NHL this season. So now it's, I want to get the sounder of Brody saying two or fewer. And it's, I don't think that's what he meant. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Yeah. Uh, sh- the interesting note here too, Shane calling out that um, whatever the real number was from the attendance, because the, the Sharks reported 12, 2, 2, 6 as tickets distributed. Uh, Shane said Kings fans made up a large part of that number. I was like, really? All right. Well, and and that makes sense. I mean, close geographically, going to be a cheap ticket, um, potentially see the Kings clinch a playoff spot or at the very least get close to clinching a playoff spot. There are worse road trips to make. (laughs) (laughs) You're right. Could go to Anaheim. Just saying. Uh, I wouldn't mind that. So the the game yesterday, I mean, come on. Excuse me while I whip this out. I I don't know if you have any extras of that hat, but I might need one. Uh, I think uh, I think your boy can probably uh, hook you up. You might be able to procure one. Uh, I might, I might. <laughs> uh, so, dude, I was thinking, you know, St. Louis, they might want revenge for getting shut out last Saturday, getting booed off their home ice, and sure. and, and instead they decided to uh, make it the William Eklund show, which I appreciated. <laughs> yeah yeah big ups to them they uh <laughs> I, I don't know there was you know i mean us included we mentioned it on the podcast multiple times like you know this guy's gotta we love him but you gotta you gotta you gotta do something right I'm and saying. uh i would think the game against the blues qualifies as something would you not 
<laughs> oh, dude, AJ Bump, I'm taking the points, dude. Yeah, yeah, that to me that I mean, there there's many different ways you can slice it. Like AJ Bump for going to the game, uh, AJ Bump for calling out uh, Eklund, um, AJ oh, that's Bump. Right. AJ Bump for perchance, you know, knowing I needed uh, four goals in a home game. So going there and making sure the Sharks kept it under four. That's right. <laughs> you know, like as soon as that game went to overtime, I just picture you being like, all right, we're out of here. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> as soon as it went to OT, I was like, my man. <laughs> no empty netters here. <laughs> That's right. And, th- dude, the other thing that really gets me, and it's like I know nobody's going to believe me, but I I literally whipped out my Eklund jersey. To, mm-hmm. to wear and then i i was too big because uh uh you know i um on a personal note uh my five sure uh cars in the shop so i wanted to leave mine here just in case she needed to go somewhere mm-hmm. so uh i caught a ride and i like bailed so quickly i forgot to bring the eklund jersey oh and that then sucks it, yeah and then it happens i'm a motherfucker <laughs> he knew you were coming yeah but dude i mean cooley First Cali-born goalie in NHL history to record a win for any California-based NHL franchise, including the Seals. You got Graf making his debut. Uh, one shot on goal, but hey, that's all right. Picked up a point uh, earlier today. He and, wasn't He wasn't a factor in the wrong way. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> in other words, the opposite of Addison? No? Okay. No kidding. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then, dude, Cooley, when he got that hug from Sharky, it's like, the dude... That was it was bigger than like getting the win. He lo- he looked like he'd been waiting at, for that hug since he started playing hockey, dude. Well, and to your point, like I don't know if you caught uh, the interview that he had with Brett Hedekin after that game, but I don't know that like like you could just tell just like he was so happy, like happy to mm. get the win, happy to be on the Sharks, happy to be just be a part of the whole operation, and. Those are the kinds of people going through a rebuild that you need on your team. You want people who want to be there. You want people that have a very deep pride in putting on that jersey. You know what I mean? Oh, big time. Uh, But I can sit there and, you know, I can say I saw Eklund's first hat trick, Cooley's first NHL win, Graf's first start, and I congratulate the 200,000 people that will claim that they were there too. (laughs) I was going to say, like, (laughs) yeah, the – it's like the in, Timo Meyer five goal game, dude. Everybody was there. Yeah, in in fifty years, the occupancy for you know the arena will be misremembered as like quadruple what it is. Oh, absolutely. But it's like I can literally say I have the hat from the game. And of course, <laughs> yeah, that is the proof, <laughs> right? Yeah, but it's oh, you bought that off eBay. I don't care. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, I think there might be photographic evidence. But anyway, dude, the Blues are the one team the Sharks swept this season. I, I almost had to call our boys over at Let's Go Blues and be like, dude, do we need to talk you off the ledge? You need to come on our show? <laughs> I mean, dude, a combined score of 12 to 3? What? Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've kind of felt it all year that the Blues had been underachieving. Um, oh, so you bad. Know, th- this time around, they don't get like a miracle run in the second half to make it to the playoffs. But mm-hmm. um, dude, they're literally like, trying to give the Ducks a win right now. Right. Well, and, and, you know, with, with this kind of stuff, you know, especially in a division or a league that's really stacked, there's always one team that kind of gets the shaft. Right. And I feel like that's the blues. Like, I think the blues are a really good team. They just have the poor distinction of having to play other good teams. Mm-hmm. And Ruben with, you know, that's a point that I've been screaming about forever. Yesterday's game is a prime ex- prime example of why they should still distribute paper tickets. So many great highlights in that game. That's a, I can't agree more. And at the very least, like I don't know. I guess we just have to make pucks available to purchase, or t- you know, like maybe there's a way. Maybe there's a way. Like, what if we? broach the shark you know what i'm just gonna throw this out there and if the sharks decide to take the idea and run with it so be it um but at one time in the shark store there was a kiosk right that you could go up to it and buy a jersey and you could put in you know the name the number fill in all the stuff that you wanted on the jersey right sure maybe we have a kiosk where it's like you know, I would like to, you know, for five bucks or whatever the, you know, whatever it 
takes to cover the ink in the paper and you make a buck or something like that, uh, that it's like, you know what? I want to print out a, uh, you know, a printed ticket of this game. You can only get that at that kiosk. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? Maybe something like that. I don't know. That'd be cool. I think so. Cause it's like that way, the people who do that, you know, that still enjoy the paper tickets. I know I've got a shadow box filled with them. So I think it would be a cool thing to have. I, dude, I, I like, uh, I like a good warm up puck as much as the next guy, but I'm not paying 40 bucks a game to tell people I was there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. But five, six bucks for a ticket. Oh, okay. You know, but can you imagine the line for that kiosk after the St. Louis game, dude? Oh, I, I, I mean, if there was any, any concern of selling out, I think that went away pretty quickly. Yeah. Well, and see, that's the other thing too. They're, they're, they're God, you would hope that there'd be some way to, to, or maybe it's just like, if you have, it's, it's, it's part of the, okay, here we go. I got it. I got it. We don't need a kiosk. Mm-hmm. You need to add it at, since all the tickets are digital now, you need like a button for, you know, when you go to access the tickets on your phone, there should be an option that says, you know, print commemorative ticket or some shit like that or buy commemorative tickets. So for that one, it it has your seat number, your section, all that shit. Boom, done. So, oh. I, you know, and not quite the same, but I think is kind of a, a merging of what you're talking about and also like the new digital age. So Puck Guy, I, and you threw up the comment exactly what I was going to say. So Puck Guy turned me on to an app called Momento where you can kind of do exactly that. Um, minus the printing of a physical ticket, but you can sort of catalog all the sporting events you've been to, and they have some stats as well and that kind of stuff. And it's it's been a lot of fun to tinker around, around with, and you know that's something Puck Guy turned me on to. And sweet, I have to look into that. So um, then we have the Arizona game, and uh, I mean, look, the Sharks had lost twice to Arizona in December, one nothing, <laughs> five two, and they said, hey, it looks so good the first time, deja vu all over again. How about another five two loss? It's Dude. really disappointing because they started strong. They did, but you know, I mean, not obviously didn't have the lead to finish the first period, but looked very good. Looked like they weathered the storm of the Coyotes and had some chances along the way. So I was, you know, when, when I finished hockey and I saw the final score, I was like, okay, I got to go back and see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> well, dude, and I don't understand why you know Addison's been so cranky the past forty-eight hours, but. Whatever. Uh, th- I will say, dude, I'm assuming that you didn't listen to the broadcast. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there was a, 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 a funny during this one. Okay. Uh, so they throw it down. Or Randy is, you know, up in his perch. And Drew, as usual, is behind the bench. And they go down to him. I think it was like to start the third and, you know, they do that little check-in once in a while where Drew will uh, talk with Wasowski or somebody to, like, get their take. You know, what do we need to do? Uh, score goals. Okay, cool. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, for whatever reason, Randy accidentally said, you know, now we go to Brett Hedekin with, you know, Sharks coach, you know, Wasowski. And he's like, uh, yeah, thanks, Randy. It's Drew Remenda. And you hear <laughs> Randy go, oh, God, I'm sorry. And so then... Drew does his his thirty second bit with Warsawski, and then at the he goes, "Okay, cool, thanks, coach. Back to you, Danny." I was gonna say I was expecting to be like, "All right, Rosie, take it back." Good yeah, <laughs> dude, I was dying, <laughs> and I'm like, "God damn, I love these guys together." I just wish it was a, a you know an all the time thing because man, do they have great chemistry. But anyway, uh, so that's the way the game's played, and uh, dude. Takeaways on what happened this week. Uh, how you liking Colin Graff after two games? You know, it's like I said earlier, like he didn't stand out in a negative way, which is good. Um, so being that it's such a small sample size, I really kind of feel like that's all you can go off of is not standing out in a bad way, right? That said, I think just as time goes on, I mean, there's how many fucking games are there left? Five. Five. Like, Two, just, two home and three away. Yeah, just, you know, do your best in those five games. And, you know, I mean, it's not like he's in danger of losing a roster spot or anything. So <laughs> just just leave it all out there. You know Dude, what I mean? Dude, you, you know who the <laughs> – guess, 
guess which guy is the most upset about Graf signing? <laughs> LeBanc. <laughs> exactly it, dude. Oh, this poor guy. And I don't mean to laugh at the guy. It's just like this whole thing has been just so. Uh, how old is so LeBanc? Awful. It's just, yeah, it's been awful. How old is LeBanc at this point? Like 27? Like he's yeah twenty because he's he's a ninety I'm trying to think he's a ninety six so yeah twenty almost twenty eight if he's not already yeah so it's like chief you're coming in to what should be your prime like I really hope he's able to find a coach that believes in him and somewhere where he finds some modicum of consistency and success well it, it's either the chicken or the egg right like what comes first because we and we've said this so many times but there's a degree the last couple of years where we felt like. LeBanc had kind of gotten jammed a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this year it's been the complete opposite where it doesn't matter the situation, who's the coach, what line he's on. Like it, it just seems like it, it almost seems like, like the things that people were saying about LeBanc two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. Like, I feel like if they were saying those things this year, it like it, I would be like, yeah, all right, I get what you're saying, you know? Yeah. And so it almost feels like, <laughs> you know, I think, or, you know, instead of I think, therefore I am, it's more <laughs> like, you know, you think, therefore I am. <laughs> I think, therefore he gone. You're right. Yeah. Well, and that's the other, like you're, I mean, not to say, not to say that Graf isn't a notable prospect, obviously, otherwise the Sharks wouldn't have lured him uh, away from Quinnipiac and signed him. But to, to lose your roster spot to an undrafted free agent, it's like, Man, I must fucking suck this year, you know? <laughs> like, oh, dude, that I mean, it's Chateau LeBanc, not yeah, Chateau, and, not Chateau and, Le Bow Wow. Yeah, and did you mention? I completely missed it. Did you mention that Graf had an assist on the um, what goal? Run? Yeah, uh, no, on the um. Oh, Cunning? On the Luke Cunning goal, yeah. So, yeah. you know, how many points has LeBanc had in his last two games, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't make the rules, dude. I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, <laughs> dude. You know, he's got last five games, he's got an assist. So if if if, if Graf goes three games and doesn't get a point, then he's uh, the same as LeBanc. That's how I understand it. Well, I forget what game it I was. I feel bad to bury LeBanc because I genuinely like the player. Yeah, but me too, dude. It's the, He's just been brutal. Yeah. Uh, and I can't remember if it was the Seattle game or the LA game. I just remember watching it and, I don't know, halfway through the first period or whatever, I noticed – that LeBanc made like a really good play in the defensive zone. And I was, mm -hmm. and the first thing that popped into my head was like, Oh, LeBanc's out there. Good for him. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like I generally felt happy for the guy. Right. Ugh. Um, so something that, uh, I kind of glossed over last week and, uh, I gotta say, do like hey. a pre pre-recorded solo show. No problem. But dude, when it's like, I'm trying to like, keep my notes, reference things, keep an eye on the chat, all this stuff, and you literally cannot take a breath or, like, get a get a sip? Oof, <laughs> dude. <laughs> well, I thought you did a great job. Oh, well, you are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you, though, how would you ask. prefer the Sharks to use their massive cap space this summer? Like, pick up some players that can help, you know, this, this next season, maybe uh, – I don't know, drive the cult, the culture a certain way. And I kind of maybe go back to like, I don't know, 97, 98 when things weren't rolling that well. And they brought in some guys like, you know, a Stefan Mateau or whatever. And, you know, you drive because they were so hard nosed during that Daryl Sutter era. Mm -hmm. And that was definitely the identity of the team. Um, or do you take on some bad contracts and, you know, you get those draft picks and you kick the can one more season because, you know, you know, that for the most part, it's the, like who who in the Pacific Division is going to be worse next season? Maybe Calgary. That's, right. a, that's a hard maybe. Right. So I, I say kick the can, but I'm interested for one more season. But I'm yeah, interested. I, I mean, the thing is, like the Sharks are not busting at the seams with guys. Right. And, you know, it felt like, geez, I want... I think it was, it was either. So if you remember, uh, I, I want to say it was before the seventeen eighteen season, uh, which was you know the first season without Patrick Marlowe. They played An they played Anaheim and Vegas in the playoffs. Like that season 
you know, the Sharks were busting at the seams with new roster players, right? Timo Meyer, Chris Tierney, Marcus Sorensen, Kevin, Kevin LeBanc. <laughs> right. Like the Sharks were busting at the seams with new players. And so they kind of reconfigured that operation on the fly. And, and they had really two, two really good playoff runs out of it, right? And the Sharks are not at that position right now. And so I think what you're saying is, it, honestly, what I would do is I would do, I would have a redo of last summer right? Mm -hmm. Like sign some guys who are good culture guys and they fill a roster spot and whatever, and see if you can't take on a, a quality asset from a strapped playoff team and then flip it down the road. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and you mentioned also taking bad contracts. I'm all in favor of doing that as well. And if you recall, the sharks were not really in a position to take on bad contracts last year because, or last summer rather, because Eric Carlson, <laughs> Tomas Hurdle, Tomas Hurdle, with you know those two guys especially were anchoring them down, and now with both of them gone, and a lot of the big money guys this year either not re-signing or if they do re-sign for some reason it'll be for less probably, like, the the Sharks are gonna have a lot of money to your point to play with. I mean, as it stands right now, according to Cap Friendly, assuming the salary cap goes up to what everybody thinks it's gonna go up to, Sharks are gonna have almost thirty eight million dollars to tinker around with and. Really, the only contract I can see that might be a bit of a sweater is uh, Philip Sedina, and that only because you know there might be a difference of opinion on which Philip Sedina is the real Philip Sedina, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not like the Sharks have a Timo Meyer or a Joe Pavelski or a Joe Thornton where it's like, okay, like we got to do this, and maybe it's this many dollars and this many. No, like there's none of that, you know. So get all their guys signed up, and then just basically, I don't know if there's like a I don't know if there's like a discord for like the NHL GMs, but just like go if there is just go in there and be like at everyone, you know, <laughs> got cap space inquire within like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, well, and the other thing that I'm, of course, concerned about is um, the status of Logan Couture, you know, sure. and God forbid that he can't come back. But hypothetically, let's say he he for whatever reason over the summer talks to doctors and surgeons and everybody that needs to be spoken to. And the determination is, you know, for the betterment of your health and your life going forward, uh, you need to stop playing hockey. Mm -hmm. What happens to it? So does Couture, if he retires, uh, does his money come off the books then? Correct. Okay. And, and it, it, it would be, uh, <laughs> it would be a financial blunder if he were if he were to retire. Should your hypothetical scenario come true, um, it would be a hypo it would be a financial blunder for him because he'd be he would be walking away uh, from he would be walking away from twenty million dollars. Now I don't know about you, but I've never heard of anybody willingly doing oh, that. Yeah. So and, oh, so he just sits on LTIR for. Right, Not and really. so then you get one of these teams, Tampa, Vegas, Toronto, like, hey, uh, you you, you want to raise your ceiling by $8 million? Cause, and that's, uh, a, that's, a, that's quite a ceiling to add. Yeah, yes it is. <laughs> Again, getting more things back, yeah, for the short, yeah, dude, I and like you know what, that. And, and that would be, and, and I imagine that would be, that would be a really hard, really hard conversation to have because you're basically being traded away to a better team and not even getting to play, you know? Mm -hmm. But I mean, so that's the, the, hard dude. And especially like, because he's been on the sharks as long as he has, you know, like I, I would venture to say he's a franchise icon at this point. I would say, uh, Pavs was a bigger one and they didn't pick up his options. So, no, I, I sure, but what I mean to say is that, you know, there might come a time where it would be the smart thing to do, but that doesn't make it easy, you know. Gotcha. Yeah, and and I see that Puck guy wants to bring Pav, let Pavs win the cup, and then come home and lead the way for the kids next season. I, I, I don't know. I don't know about you, man, but I, like, I don't. Sounds like, that sounds too movie for me. Yeah, you know what though, Pavs uh, might be like, I don't get, dude. There. <laughs> Pav's house was on Zillow the minute the fucking ink was dried on that contract. Like, yeah, 
You know what I mean? And that's not to say that he hates San Jose. That's more to say I'm moving forward. This is the next chapter of my life. Yeah. Well, the the big thing is, I mean, dude, if Chief, just say hypothetically, say Chief wins the cup with Dallas this season. Mm -hmm. Two things. I I I would I would guess that he's done. He's like, you know, he he definitely seems like a goal oriented guy. Like it's like when I've reached the mountain, then I move on to the next thing. And so I feel like if he won the cup this year, he'd be like, finally, it's done. Get my ring. I'm going to go play with my kids now. Have fun, NHL. I'm out. I don't I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I feel like he's still at such a high level. Yeah, that which he, is so he has fucking a ridiculous. Offer. You know that he that he still has a lot to offer. Yeah, dude. Well, you know what? And I I like Eric's idea. And as you just mentioned, the Sharks are gonna have money to burn. Like maybe you fucking throw him an offer, and say, hey, come back, help us drive the culture. You know, it sucked without you here, and we had a great culture when you were steering the ship. Let's see if we can't get back to that. I don't know. Yeah. It's it. It could be interesting. We don't know the taste. Does in... he get the C, Does he get the C back? <laughs> oh, well. I mean, if Couture's LTI retired, yeah, yeah. I think it's automatic. What if I told you? Oh man, this could. We could go down the fucking rabbit hole on this. What if I told you that at 39 years old, Pavelski would be leading the Sharks in scoring if he was still on the team? I would say sounds right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Bozo saying Pavs retires as a star for sure. If he wins the cup with Dallas, I would agree. Yeah. But you know what? Like we've had this conversation before. Like, I don't understand this, this idea that everybody has to retire with somebody. Cause there's a million examples of guys being like, all right, I'm out later. And then you just never hear from him again. And yeah. I kind of feel like that would be the Pavs approach is like, to your point, I won my cup. I scored a lot of goals and was awesome. Deuces. I'm out. You know, I don't think Pavs need the whole celebration and you know the one day contract and all that bullshit i don't really think that that's i don't for think one, he don't... needs that it dude i think that's more for the teams than anything like i would agree with that you know and let's it's for the fans but it's also to sell some merch and all that stuff but the other thing that um i think we're neglecting to mention as well that maybe that does keep pavs going for another season last i looked i think he's only like 25 goals away from hitting 500 yeah, I believe that you're right. And he's only, uh, yeah, 25 away from 500 and 35 away from 1,100 points. Yeah, so it's kind of like he's, dude, he'd hit that next season. Like, I is have he, no doubt. And and it's sort of like, I feel like the, the lore for him is only going to get bigger. I mean, he's already, you know, he's already the... Um, uh, what is he, the, the highest scoring American born player in NHL playoff history? Yeah, and he's like the most points for like anybody who's ever been taken in the seventh round. <laughs> yeah, like the, the lore will only go from here. Like, I feel like I don't, you know, I'm sure there will be a lot of rhetoric on it one way or the other, but I think if you're, if you're grading him on a, uh, expectations and predictions versus actual outcome metric, I would say he's a Hall of Famer. Absolutely. So you know, I, I, I think a, I think a Stanley Cup would would seal the deal on that, right? Mm -hmm. But to your point, you know, he's the um, highest scoring player ever taken in the seventh round. He's the highest scoring American-born NHLer uh, in the playoffs. Uh, he's won a silver medal at the Olympics. He's won an NCAA championship, a USHL championship. Like a Stanley Cup would seal that deal, I think. Mm. Oh, I'm hoping. But anyway, so to get back to what we started talking about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thanks a lot, puck guy. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole thing is uh, we're both of the mind of, like, let them cook for a season. Let these kids marinate. Let's try. And I yeah, would go so far to say as, and maybe we overhaul the coaching staff of the Barracuda. Mm -hmm. And, you know, get some guys in there that can help, you know, develop. The drafting well is only part of it. You still have to develop them. So maybe that needs to be addressed. Um, following the Kings loss, though, I thought this was kind of interesting. Quinn had an interesting quote about the Sharks' rebuild, saying, we're in a lot better position than we were two years ago. We knew that this was probably going to be a year that was going to be the most painful. Things are going to turn around here quickly. 
So now the first line of that, it's previous or it's consistent with previous statements that he's made because at the beginning of this season, he said development camp looked a lot different this year from last year. I think our prospect pool has really improved dramatically in one year. Uh, Greer's done a heck of a job. Staff's done a great job. I feel really good about where we are as an organization compared to a year ago. And so now he's saying the same thing, but saying two years. So consistency there. But as for this, you know, we knew the season would be painful. Uh, dude, he said last October, we certainly understand what people think of us outside the organization and let them feel that way. There's a quiet confidence within our group. And I know they're excited to get going. And also talked about how he expects the team to compete and surprise the NHL. And of course, the sarcastic asshole in me goes, surprise them how? By challenging worst goal differential in history? <laughs> you know? And now, to be fair, no team has lost more players to injury than the Sharks this year, dude. But I still felt like those statements were a bit excessively optimistic. You know, and I get it. Like, what's the coach going to say at the start of the season? Yep, it's going to suck real hard. And uh, when we got Celebrini here or, you know, we got the best odds, uh, you're all going to be fine with it, right? So, I mean, I get that you have to pump the tires, but sometimes it becomes self-serving propaganda. And I'm like, you know, maybe it's just okay to say, we expect this to be a transitional year. Might not make the playoffs, but we expect to play with an edge. Start the new era in the right way. That type of shit. Um. Even Pierre Maguire said the Sharks are another three years from making the playoffs, but we'll get to him in a moment. Um, so is this offseason the most important in franchise history? I, I, mm, I would say it's the most important offseason in franchise history right now. You know, but I, I think if if the Sharks are able to get uh, Celebrini and then continue to build from there. I think every subsequent off season would be the most important in franchise history. Well, I, you know, it's how great would it be to have number one and how great would it be to get number 11? I think the last time I looked, there was, it, it, it's moved up to 12, but that's still pretty good and get some value there. Mm hmm. Uh, and who's to say, I mean, I don't know, the, <laughs> I don't know that this would be a big money Mike move or not that, that you would be like jumping for, but we saw Mike trade down their number one pick last year, right? Uh, no, two years ago. Two years. Oh, I thought that was when Greer was here. Yeah, that was Greer. That was 2022. He's been here two years already. Yeah. Two drafts. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so, but. We saw him in the first season trade down. It makes me wonder, like, uh, say they get one and 12. Obviously, you take Celebrini at one. Makes you wonder if there's going to be someone that comes down the pipe and says, hey, Mike, we heard you like trading down sometimes. Uh, what, what do you want for number 12? Depends on who's available. Yeah, of course. Both through drafting and also if there's a young player for trade that comes available. Exactly. Uh, a lot of options by yeah. having two firsts. But... I'm telling you. That, well, and aren't they like scheduled to have two first next season as well? Uh, yeah, that is correct. And we, so we have to really hope that Vegas just shits the bed next season. That would be nice. Um, Which, as, as we've talked about before, like you know, I don't think it's guaranteed, but it's certainly on the table. Oh, absolutely. So, I, yeah, I feel like this is just going to be a ridiculously important off season, and if if Greer can just make all the right cho choices. You know, make good decisions is what we're saying, Mike. <laughs> so, you think the Sharks are going to be this bad next season? A hundred percent. Really? So, I mean, I mean they might I, they might be marginally better, but they're still going to be a lottery team. Okay. Well, I was going to say, and because why wouldn't they be at least at this point? Because Greer's traded away all the high end talent to get futures. Well, theoretically, the young players would take a step forward, right? Theoretically, but there aren't there some players that while they've been, you know, they're quote unquote part of uh, the system may not come over. Like, is Musty still going to be uh, playing in college? Do you mean juniors? Juniors, excuse me. What was I, I thinking of? Will Smith? Yeah. yeah. I, you know, and the thing with Musty, I think it really sucks that he's as young as he is because. He's the kind of guy that you 
probably want to see play professional games, and that would require you to play him in the NHL because he's too young to go to the AHL right now, which is unfortunate. <laughs> and uh, what about Cagnoni? What about him? Is he a guy that you expect to go to the CUDA, or is that another guy that it's like, no, he's staying where he is for one more season? Hmm. I mean, he'll probably stay in Portland, honestly. Got it. Um, I mean, they they might do the same thing where they give him a uh, give him a chance in the NHL, but I just can't see it. See, that's why I'm of the mind of like, let's kick the can down the curb. Let's take this off season to make uh, sweeping changes to the Barracuda coaching staff. Get them in place. Then next season, you know, you bring in your Musty, you bring in your you know Smith. Cagnoni, whoever else, uh, man, and then you know you got Beastead already coming up, getting three points in his first game. Like, let's get a little chemistry going there, people. And so, if Couture is LTI retired, who's your next captain? Is he currently on this roster? No. Huh. Who are the mentors next season? Like, who sets the tone and builds the culture then? Well, Granlund for one. Yeah. I, I, it seems like a lot of guys are pointing the finger at Cunning. For some reason. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, well, I'm not in the room. I don't see it, but whatever. But I, th- I think, Tim, I mean, Granlund for one. Ferraro, it should be Ferraro. Like, as long as he's had an A on his jersey, I don't know that I've ever seen him be a leader. And that's not trying to call him out. I just haven't seen it. And... <laughs> And then obviously, like you said, you know, the guys seem to really feel a certain way about uh, Cunning. So I guess Cunning. Thank you, Mitya. We definitely appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm-mm-mm. For all the evidence that Wilson left the mess, you cannot deny he was able to bring in big names. Whether it was like Thornton or Campbell or Boyle or Heatley, Burns, Kane, Carlson. Will Greer be able to bring in big names? Eventually, I would say yes, but not anytime soon. Uh, and conversely, will Greer be better at scouting and drafting talent? Will he, you know, put more successful people in those roles? I mean, for all the competitive teams that Wilson iced over the season or over the years, he's had some truly horrible drafts. And I lo- did some, you know, a little not not too much of a deep dive. I was somewhat in the shallow end, but dude, he's lost a lot of his trade ups. Like he. Three picks to move up from 39 to 31 to get Jeremy Waugh. You know, trading a third to swap seconds and move up 16 slots to take Matt Nieto. Meanwhile, 16 slots later, Gostas Barra was there. And, of course, you know, the biggest draft day blunder Wilson ever made was trading 20 and 58. They ended up being Mantha and Bertuzzi to move a whole two slots for Mirko Mueller. And you think about those, who did they actually develop? That's like, it's a legitimate question. Like I'm asking the chat as well. And I know Ian and, you know, and, and Eric and those guys and Jules, they're going to have some, some things to say, but I just, I'm actually one of my, who did they develop? Cause I don't remember Couture playing a whole lot of time with Wooster. Like, is there somebody that played there for like a season and a half, two seasons that they actually got him going. And then he came in and was like a meaningful part of the sharks for a while. I mean the 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 ones that immediately come to mind are Meyer, LeBanc, Sorensen, Jake Middleton. But mo- um, weren't those guys typically? Uh, wasn't it Cuda? Well, yeah. I mean, okay, but I'm just saying, you know, over the course of those drafts, that Greer was, or that uh, I'm sorry, that Wilson was a part of that. That whole group was a part of the whole draft and developing. That basically the the Roy Sumner era. Mm-hmm. Like they're just, I don't remember there being a whole lot of names. Yeah. Meyer, LeBanc, Sorensen. They were all, they were all on that Barracuda team that went to the Western conference final. Oh, okay. All right. That's fair. I'll give him uh, that then. Tim, Tim Heed, Barkley Goodrow, Ryan Carpenter, Marcus Goody. Sorensen. Goody's a good, that's a, that's uh, a good call. Rourke, Chart- Rourke Chartier has been in the NHL for the Ottawa senators. Colin Blackwell, uh, Jake Middleton. You know, no real sexy names beyond Timo Meyer, but some names. Jamie McGinn? I mean, a million years ago, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, hey, it's still an answer to the question. 
<laughs> so um, we addressed a couple weeks ago some comments that Pierre Maguire made a couple weeks ago. And uh, early this week, Shang talked with Pierre about some of those comments. And um, one standout was when Pierre said the, uh, the Sharks have to fix the goal differential. And his, and his buddy, Pierre's b- podcast buddy, said, you know, that stat has stood the test of time. I mean, yeah, I, I've heard when you outscore the opponent, it's good. I, I don't know. He said a bunch of uh, other obvious things. I just, mm, I think listening to that discussion, and feel free to go go check it out. I have to say, dude, McGuire, dude, the reputation that he has, it's it's easy to see how he got it. That's I think that's all I need to say. It's just, whew. but a couple of things he did say that I wanted to get your take on. He said the high California tax rate is a real thing when it comes to getting talent to come in. I, I don't disagree with that assessment, but why is it, why has it only been a real thing the last five or seven years? Like, why was it not a real thing before then? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not to say that there's not value there. But it seems really suspicious that all of a sudden it's a big deal when previously it never was a big deal. Well, and, the, you know, the funny thing about that is him talking about, oh, you know, it's going to make it difficult to get uh, talent to sign here. And then, like, literally the next day, Graf signs. Right. Because <laughs> – and, and Graf even said, like, the opportunity to play is what drew him into it. And so, like, yeah, I mean, you know – in an ideal scenario, you would take home as much money as you can. But at the end of the day, if opportunity and happiness are on the table, you can't just ignore that. Mm-hmm. So he also said coaching is not the issue at all in San Jose. And I'm kind of like... Spoken like a true coach that fucking sucks, huh? <laughs> Dude, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, well, if his, you know, if he's so star-spangled awesome, when was the last, how come he's not coaching anywhere? I don't know. Uh, let's, let's just move on before I get myself into trouble. Uh, the sharks went one, eight and two in their Cali Finn jerseys. So they're cursed, right? We're going to burn them, right? That's how it I works. Th- I, I thought they already burned them cause they gone back to the teal. Oh, that's true. All right. Uh, how are the pens doing? Dude, pick watch 2024. As it stands right now, if the draft was today, it would be 16th overall. Ooh, what happened? A week ago, somehow, did Pittsburgh go on a run? Yeah, well, dude, uh, I don't know if you've been watching. Dude, the, <laughs> e- the Eastern Conference playoff picture has been wild the last week or so. Fucking four-game um, win streak, you assholes. Yeah, Pittsburgh, 6-2-2 uh, two and two in their last 10. Uh, the Red Wings have been hot. The Lightning have been hot. You know, the Capitals and the Flyers have been kind of shitty, which is why Detroit and Pittsburgh and Tampa and the Islanders have been able to step up so much. So these last two weeks of the season, if you like excitement, Eastern Conference playoff picture is going to give it to you. Well, dude, and I'm I'm eyeballing it right now, dude. You've got Detroit with the last wild card spot, 84, and then Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh 83, Washington 83, Philly 83. And even then, like, New Jersey and Buffalo, yeah, they're a bit out, but who's to stop them from winning five in a row, right? Dude, well, the Pittsburgh, you know, the, uh, the here's the other thing, too, is that um, that remaining schedule at Toronto, you know, playoff team, Detroit. That's Maybe going to rest their top guys. Uh, well, I can't see Detroit. You just, I don't, I don't know that that's no, really dude, ever Toronto- benefited at anybody. Dude, I, I don't disagree, but I what I can tell you is the Maple Leafs are a big load management team. And since they're already locked into a spot, they will rest, guys. 100%. Okay. And I will tell you something else that's 100%. Toronto rests, guys, and they get knocked out in the first round. And it's, oh, they shouldn't have fucking rested those guys. If they don't rest, guys, get knocked out in the first round. Oh, it's because they didn't rest, guys. Mm-hmm. That's That's, I'm just, you know. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's like I I hope you enjoyed that glimpse into the future. Hey, so speak really quick. Speaking of teams that have made the uh, Eastern Conference playoffs, uh-huh. all of the sudden, and you know where I'm going with this, all of the sudden what? the uh, the sleeping giant has awoken. Would you uh. Would you agree? <laughs> Seven two and one over their last ten, dude. Never, <laughs> never, ever, ever count them out. 
Fucking Tampa Bay, baby. Dude, Nikita Kucherov. Just like I, dude, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. Like, whoever wins the Hart Trophy between Kucherov and McKinnon will deserve it. And whoever loses will be snubbed. There's no way to avoid both. Mm-hmm. But I'm kind of looking like, like, he is very much like we are making the playoffs no matter fucking what. And like guy, he just can't stop having three point games. You know what I mean? <laughs> he just can't stop. <laughs> well, dude, uh, back to Pittsburgh. So at, De- uh, at Toronto, then hosting Detroit, who they're in a battle with. So that should be a good matchup. Mm-hmm. Then Boston, who's already got, you know, it, I mean, I'm not going to say it's, it's mathematically locked up because it's not, but you know, top of their divi- division, uh, then Nashville, who are battling in their wild card situation, both them and Vegas have 92 points. There's nobody nipping at their heels, so it's kind of, I don't know. Like I feel like Nashville, uh, you know, you obviously want to go in playing well. They're six four, six four and zero oh over their last ten, so you probably want to work on that. So that could be a battle. And then the Islanders, who again. Pittsburgh's only two points behind. So, dude, all of those teams are ahead of Pittsburgh in the standings. This should be a wild finish over the next two weeks. And the President's Trophy, dude, still up for grabs. Like It's going to be a really interesting conclusion. I was going to say, dude, I can't remember the last time that the President's Trophy... I don't know. It just seems like it's been a while. I'm not saying that it hasn't, that it didn't happen last year. I'm just saying my my recollection is usually the president's trophy when there's two weeks left. It's pretty much fait complete. Like you know who it is, and right now, I mean, Rangers at 110, Bruins at 107, Dallas at 105, Carolina at 105. I th- unless something miraculous happens, I think we can count Dallas and Carolina out of it. Which is again, I'm fine with because, dude, how many? I don't know, dude. The way the season's been, though, like, can you really count out anybody until the season's over? Yeah, right. But uh... like five points out, like, especially Dallas. Da- well, and they have a game in hand. Dallas. One team's just gonna go, and like Vancouver, right? Like Vancouver's kind of slipped out of that first spot. But dude, Vancouver five and five in the last ten. If they go on a rip. Like <laughs> this shit is not over, man. <laughs> Dude, this is so weird. But and it should be noted the last time the Rangers won the President's Trophy, they won the cup. Makes you think. Yeah. But it, it for the most part, let's also be honest. Dude, the President's Trophy's been the kiss of death. For, yeah, I think I think what is it? Uh it's like six of the last thirty team, you know, thirty years, six that have won the trophy went on to win the cup. Yeah, that's no, dude. It's uh is it worse than that? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight teams ever. <laughs> Granted, the trophy, to well, your point, has only been tra- around for the trophy is only forty years old. Yeah, but still, dude, eight times out of forty, and like, I think what's more staggering is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight teams. So eight Presidents Trophy teams have won the cup eight president trophy teams have lost in the first round. Yep. Makes you think. Dude, that's a kick in the smalls. All right, so um, when the sh- I love going back to this. When the Sharks had 19 games left, I set the OU for wins at four and a half. Said I'd hammer the under at three and a half. Sure. Uh, well, with five games left, how's it looking? Well, they got that second win. Or two, two <laughs> in the last 22. So they got, uh, and so Saturday they got the third. Right. So Mm -hmm. basically, they can't win again. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. And so, oh, go ahead. If the the over under line is at four and a half and they get to four, I mean, you're still in the money. Yeah, but I also said I'd hammered it if it was three and a half. (laughs) Fair enough. Um, But it'd be funny if it's going to be right in there. But anyway, and this is something that kind of glossed over last week. What are you looking for during the final five games? Whether it's progression from the Luns, uh, does LeBanc get any leash whatsoever? Uh, Blackwood finishing healthy and strong, Bordelow continuing to approve, uh, fit, figuring out whatever Addison's issues are. 
I mean, really what I'm looking for is the guys that we know are going to be on this Sharks team next year and make an impact. I want to see those guys continue to do so. Like, I want, you know, Granlund, Eklund, Zetterlund. I want the Lunds to continue to go off. I want Mario Ferraro to play well defensively. You know, I want basically Thomas Bordolo to play well. I want Philip Zadina to earn an extension with the Sharks. Like, Mm. the guys who... The guys who will be here next year or should be here next year, I want them to finish the season strong. Well, and at the start of the season, there was an article, Five Ways the Sharks Can Be Better Than Expected. We're going to get into that next week. I thought that would be uh, something funny to uh, roll up when we basically have almost all the numbers. Um, But uh, it's, (laughs) let me put it this way. It's uh, five ways the Sharks can be better. Uh, Maybe they hit one out of five. (laughs) <laughs> Step one, win more games. <laughs> I'm telling you. So, uh, Hero and Zero this week. We got to come up with a nicer name for that. <laughs> Stop no, it. I think it's perfect. <laughs> All right. Um, dude, I, I, I mean, I got to go with Eklund. I mean, he single-handedly is responsible for the Sharks getting their only win this week. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I do want to call this out that I picked uh, – what was it? There was um, – Go oh, cost him with the nine points in 13 games, and then, uh, dude, assist to Granlin and Eklund, extending Granlin's point streak. Uh, Eklund getting the, the the hat trick, and either way, last week I said, you know, I called the show what Granny Zets and Eki, and then the next game they like got all the points, but Jerk would not give me my 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 cookies. <laughs> it's fine. What did you say I was doing? I was reaching something. Oh, man. What did you say? Not manufacturing. What did I, I don't remember what I said. It was something on Twitter. Said. I'm like, dude, I want my cookies for this. And you were like, dude, you're like projecting or something. I forget what it was. Oh, he, uh, manifesting. There you go. Uh, so uh, who's your hero for the week? Well, I don't know. I mean, all the ones that you listed are all kind of really good shouts. Um, but I think mine's going to be more ceremonial. Sure. I'm going to say, I'm going to say Devin Cooley, like Cooley. E- even the games that he's lost, I thought he's looked really good. And so to finally get the win, see how excited he was, how excited his family was. Like, it was just a really awesome, like feel good moment in a season. That's been full of like, you know, kick in the groin moments. <laughs> so bet. I'm going to say Devin Cooley. I like that. Dude, uh, my zero for the week. I, I mean, we've mentioned him certainly enough. With 35 penalty minutes in two games, Addison, you get my zero for the week. I don't know what is hoping, uh, happening with you, but uh, I hope you figure it out. Really unfortunate, too, because I all season I've been really hyped up about um, bringing him in and seeing what he can do, and he's unfortunately not come as delivered, and I'm really worried that that's going to lead to him not getting resigned. <laughs> Yeah, I would hate to see that. Like, let's let's try to fix this issue. Whew. Um, who's your zero? I mean, it's kind of hard to not <laughs> double down on Addison. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> double dip, by the my brother. But I, I, <laughs> I mean, I don't know who else to pick but Addison. Like, yeah, like the Sharks. Okay, yeah. What did what did we? You know, they're one three and zero oh this week and. You know, I'm sure you can nitpick a bunch of little different things, but you know, Addison has been exceptionally brutal, and it's been so bad. He's going to get double dipped this week. I like it, especially because he's a guy who should be counted on for offense. He's not providing it. He's a guy who should be counted on to play minutes. He's not really doing that. He's a guy that should be here when this thing eventually turns over, and he's playing like he doesn't want to be or like he shouldn't be. Hmm. Uh. So I mentioned earlier about the Blues trying to give it away to the Ducks. <laughs> the Blues did win, but it was in a shootout. <laughs> Despite their best efforts, the Blues won. Blues are frauds. I think we've all determined that. Yeah. So, which leads us into, you know, uh, the question that we always ask around this time of year. If the playoffs started today. Wow, 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 wow. Nice callback. <laughs> what matchups got you froggy, bro? Well... Right off the top here, Edmonton and L.A. for the third year in a row. 
my immediate thought is <laughs> stop those it already. Gonna, <laughs> no, no, actually quite the opposite. My immediate thoughts is like, all right, here we go again. Let's get it to seven. And you know, the, the combined score is going to be like 70 to 71. Well, like I got to tell you those series. The, I, I know there there's been a lot of dialogue and a lot of complaining from myself included about <laughs> the current playoff structure. But I do think getting Edmonton LA potentially for the third year in a row, I think that's one of the very few positives to come out of it because those matchups are thrilling as hell. I got to say, th this is the only reason why I'm kind of like, mm, again, with this, the the only thing that kind of loses just a little bit for me is the fact that T-Mac isn't involved again. That's fair. You know, like it was... Mean <laughs> Always meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, I'm looking at that Hurricanes Islanders matchup, thinking like that game, that series is going to go nine games with how slow those teams play. <laughs> like that, dude. You, you talk about a combined a combined score, dude. Like, how many of those games are going to be if it goes seven? Let's just say, like, most of those games will probably be one zero two one three two. Like, you know, like they played last year together, and it was boring as shit. You know. Well, if you're looking at the. Um... The wild card matchups, right? Like, if, if you're Vegas, who would you rather see? You know, who would you rather, Edmonton or Vancouver? I think if I had to hone, if I'm Vegas and I had to hone in on one thing, I would think I would rather play Edmonton only because as good as their goaltending has been lately, it was brutal to start the year. And I think that's more likely to resurface than Vancouver's goaltending being brutal. <laughs> Yeah, I'm thinking they, they really want to get back up. And Ian pointing out Woodcroft isn't involved in this matchup either between I'll tell LA you what. and Edmonton. I'll tell you what, though. If, if we want to, if we're talking, you know, if you want to throw a couple shackles onto anything, mm -hmm. don't sleep on the Winnipeg Jets, dude. Do not really? sleep. Do not sleep on my Jets. Okay. I, I feel you on this. But I got to tell you, I've also, you know, been hearing on uh, some of the, the national media and whatnot that they're like, you know, Colorado, they're they're primed to do their thing. They're going to be the well, juggernaut. I don't know. I, I think Colorado is definitely good. I'm not going to dispute you there, but they're not. I don't think they're as I don't think they're as good as people make them out to be like. I've heard I've heard a lot of the same things you're talking about, and I've heard some people say that they're just going to run to the Western Conference Final, and I'm not buying it. You know, like I think maybe it takes six or seven games, but I, if these playoff matchups were locked in, I think the Jets are going to beat Colorado. And I know everybody in the chat is going to clip that and dunk on me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> I really feel strongly about that. And to show you how strongly I feel, I'll put some money on the Jets to win that series. All right. Uh, and I'll laugh to the bank. Okay. You want to um, crispy fin? No, I'll put real money on that. I'll fire up my fucking betting account right now. And put yeah, some but real if you're money. giving out money, I want some crispy fin. No. Well, you Sign don't up want... a... I'll send you a referral code. How's that? <laughs> no, you don't want to go five bucks with me on that? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to embarrass you in front of all your friends. Oh, so. oh, oh, oh. Okay, we'll get it. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that offline. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be honest, though. As exciting as the, I don't know, as exciting as the Eastern Conference playoff race has been, none of these matchups really Dude, wow me. I was about to say the exact same thing. Except maybe, uh, maybe New York. Except maybe, Pittsburgh. yeah, I could see. Well, no, honestly, I think Florida, Toronto. Because Florida, I, I mean, I just I, because Toronto like perennially just like loses first round to uh, Florida teams. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, I'm 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 I'm, you know, very famously on record where I don't remember, but I'm very famously on record as saying that the final this year is going to be Jets and Panthers. So Jesus, that would, uh, you know, satisfy that prediction. Yeah, oh, that'd be nice. I mean, I. <sighs> I would, you know, I would really enjoy it if it was, you know, Toronto, Boston. Sure. But obviously, you Toronto, know. Tampa, <clears throat> Florida, what? Tampa. Yeah. I feel like as it's funny because a year yeah, ago, Florida, they were Tampa, the, a year ago, they were this wagon. And now I feel like of those four in the top right of that image, I feel like Boston is the least interesting of the four. 
yeah, as I, much as as dude, much as I love Jeremy Swayman. Like, yeah, no, I got to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm kind of there with you. I just feel like uh, that that might be a little bit of a snoozer, unless Tampa gets out to an early lead. Then you're just kind of like, whoa, really? Right. And, I mean, and and you were saying, don't sleep on those. Yeah, I I don't think any like never sleep on the lightning. You know what I mean? Like. I want one once the matchups are locked in and we're and we're able to fill out the NHL bracket challenge, which the link is in the discord. If you want to sign up for the Teal Town USA League, um, I'm, I'm going to be really interested to see what people are thinking about a lot of these series, because this might be the most. And I think we've talked about this before. This might be the most wide open. The playoff picture has been in a long time. Yeah, this like who's your who's your favorite? Uh, and. To win the whole thing or in division? I mean, just like just like what this matchup breakdown shows right now. Like, pick your final, pick your cup final. Like, how easy is it for you? You know what I mean? Oh, it's 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 not easy, right? And and I can't really say the last time that it wasn't easy. You know? Oh, and what'd you say? You said Jets, Canes, Jets, Panthers. Is is your final? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> okay. See, I'm kind of leaning, um, God, fuck me. I don't know the last time it was this hard. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I'm kind of going, and I think this is just me being hopeful. Sure. Uh, and, and of course, that's always my downfall in the bracket challenge is I bet my heart mm -hmm. <laughs> what I want to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Stars Rangers. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think if I had to pick a backup, that's pretty close. Now, like, what I, now as a Sharks fan, what I super duper duper really want, of course, to see happen is I want to see the Stars blow out the Penguins in four. <laughs> right. I think you know why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it, like I think if like if not the Jets, I would like if I did. Okay, I'm gonna make this really complicated. Like for me, a top three in the West is Jets, Dallas, Vancouver, and a top three in the East would probably be Florida, New York Rangers, and probably the Lightning. Hmm. I'm just I'm real interested to see how the wild card shakes out in the West, just because you know it's L.A. and Vegas just keep battling back and forth and there was a you know remember just a couple weeks ago we were talking about like dude vegas could get buried and miss the fucking playoffs and then they fucking went on a run dude well fortunate <sighs> fortunate for them is the 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 three teams on their ass they played in the same week and beat them all <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> like it, like they took points the in every game makers rigged it no they took points in every game i was like god damn these assholes <laughs> yeah and and so they you talk about getting hot at the right time like mm. i would say like at this point like at this point vegas or la or nashville would have to collapse and St. Louis would have to go on a rip in order to change things the way that they currently stand. And as it's been pointed out in the chat, though, the blues are incredibly fraudulent. And so, yeah, they don't, we need to come up with a new word. <laughs> I see fraud like for everything now. <laughs> it's a great word. Uh, I mean, you talk about betting or over under, I mean, um, I don't know if you put any scratch on, uh, can you put a, a scratch on the, uh, over under for the, uh, I don't know the amount of fights in a game. Certain <laughs> certain sport certain sports books you can, um, my sports books you can't. Because this, I mean, dude, this Rangers Devils debacle, like what in the world? Yeah, no kidding. L like what started that? And out of all of that, we don't get Tierney versus Goodrow. Come on. But this the, this was just insane. Like I don't what provoked this because I wasn't paying attention. I, I think it has to do with, you know, like you submit the lineup card and you start with your fourth line. Like, I imagine it had to do something with that. There was no, like, uh, something that happened in a previous game that, like, you know, Rempe or somebody was just like, oh, you know, these dudes going to pay. Yeah, I really couldn't say. All right. Well, I'm sure if there's something to be said about it, the chat will have it. But, whew, I don't know what brought that to light. Uh, 
more around the NHL. Um, we have more desert dreams. Oof. Yeah, the Arizona Coyotes. The wait is finally over, introducing the new arena that the Coyotes plan to build. I mean, there's been a lot of plans. Uh, in North Phoenix, off of Scottsdale Road in the 101 freeway. Now, sorry, look. We already have a 101 freeway. <laughs> when, as soon as I saw that, I'm all, wait, what? There's more than one? How is that possible? But, dude, the, the whole thing. Coyotes announced commitment to win state land auction and build privately funded arena and entertainment district. Let me just ask you this. Do you think it's a good idea to announce that you plan to win an auction? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I, yeah, I do get it. I just kind of go, yikes. I think someone is, you know. You better win. <laughs> yeah. So those eBay snipers are going to come out. Now, that said, I mean, it's it's funny to see the renderings just because, like, there's just a part of me, oh, we're going to build this huge entertainment district. And, and it's like, well, look, there's nothing else there. <laughs> so, it's and I get it, like, 20 years from now, this whole thing will probably be much further along in the development, but... I gotta say the uh, the photos, it it looks like a super duper cool venue. Yeah. Um. Of course, the photos for the athletics ballpark in Vegas looks like a super cool venue. We'll see if that actually happens. But at this point, dude, there is no plan B. It's, no, this is this is it. Yeah, it's this a relocation. Yeah. <laughs> this this is literally it, and I and I think I. I think I maybe I'm pretty sure I saw a comment where it was like the coyotes are prepared to win at any cost kind of thing. <laughs> so the exact opposite of what they are on the ice. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. But but th but this is it. Like they there's no like that you you talk about, you know, you you talk about uh, earlier I was talking about, you know, running out of racetrack. Like they're at the end of the road. Like they mm. are they are they are Tobey Maguire Spider-Man trying to hold the train back coming to the end of the tracks. Like that is the Coyotes right now. Yeah, and this and is end of June, I want to say. Is that when they I want to Yeah, I want to say it's the 27th 8th? of June or 28th, yeah. yeah, somewhere in there. All right, so we shall see. That's something to keep an eye on. <laughs> another thing to uh to I don't know, pay attention to. It's that little morsel that we can all glean or glom onto just before free agent frenzy kicks in, right? Right. I liked it. Uh, I saw something from Ian. Uh, so Rempe took liberties on the Devils players uh, the game before and then ducked McDermott the rest of the game. Ah, okay. Yeah, that'll do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like if uh, Rempe isn't going to answer the bell, then the whole team is, I suppose. There you go. So, and speaking of Arizona, they proved uh, just this past Friday night, no game is over until it's over. Usually a three-goal lead for Vegas means a win, but Friday night, Vegas took a 4-1 lead into the third period and somehow allowed the Coyotes, the 28th team in the league, to score six times in just over nine minutes. And I'm trying to remember, when was the last time Vegas pissed away a three-goal lead in the third after letting in a bunch of goals in just a few minutes? You know, there's one moment that comes to mind, but I'm a little fuzzy on the details. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know. I, I, could I, it, is it potentially is the five year anniversary of that moment maybe coming up in a couple weeks? I per chance. I feel like it is. You know, the uh, other cool anniversary that I uh, heard mention today. Uh, evidently, it was the anniversary. I can't remember how fucking long it's been. I was there. I know it was sometime like 99. Were you two actually there? Uh, I actually was. <laughs> I have photos. Uh, 99, 2000-ish, whatever it was, but it was Fan Appreciation Day, and they gave out hats, just mm. like with the Eklund thing, and it was Mike Ricci scoring in the final minute, and every every hat that was given away was on the ice. So uh, evidently, either yesterday or today, I think it was today was the uh, anniversary of that, but anyway. Oh boy, tweet of the week, and I I don't I don't want to go down the well, but tweet of the week is it's going to go to me. <laughs> I had tweeted out that I appreciated aesthetics pointing out in their video that the Blackhawks would be playing in their fifth Winter Classic next season, 
while 16 other NHL teams haven't played in a single one yet. Most people, if they can read, they go, yeah, 16 other teams have yet to play in a winter classic. But you would be shocked and amazed at the amount of people that came at me who don't know me, don't follow me, just decided randomly to be, oh, dude, you, you know, what are you talking about? There's only four teams that haven't played in outdoor games. And I'm like, I, where did I say outdoor game? <laughs> you know? And then, you know, there's a couple of people coming at me. Oh, you're splitting hairs. And I'm like, dude, don't get mad because you failed to read. <laughs> right. You know, it's not on me <laughs> to like spoon feed you shit. Just like take the L, just realize you didn't read the whole thing. It's fine. Move on. All you had to do is say, oh, okay, <laughs> and been done with it. Or better yet, don't fucking respond. <laughs> I mean, I kind of feel like that's the right answer is like, just don't be mad online, you know? Thank you. That's, that's all I'm saying. I, I, I'm i sure you, uh, <laughs> I'm sure you saw the, uh, the uh, reply to your tweet um, oh God, that I one? threw out there. Which one? You, you tweeted about the wave, and I uh, fired off an Amazon link back to you. Oh, what did it say? Something about I, too, hate fun or something? No, it was a link to the book Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. Oh, yeah, same, same. <laughs> yeah, well, and when I pointed that out, you know, it was just me saying, you know, come. I was, I was poking fun. I was like, come on, we're better than this, you know. Mm -hmm. and, you know, just to having fun. Uh, and then of course, you know, people, you know, come at me, you know, oh, don't hate on fun or whatever. And I'm like, dude, I was having fun with the fun. Right. You know, it's, I didn't say that I wasn't participating in it. Right. But anyway, oh, uh, let's move on to the Barracuda before we get out of here. Uh, we mentioned earlier, Beastead played his first game with the Cuda, scored twice, had an assist, game time goal and the lead taker, uh, jerk. Many people are saying that those are high value goals. <laughs> yes yes they are uh really exciting to have that quick of an impact uh in his ahl debut dude gotta love that three point night the other thing though that i was kind of rooting for alex stalock got the victory and uh who are they playing it was the goals right mm -hmm. so stalock gets the victory in what was likely his last the last game of his career sadly uh it's a six five shootout loss for the cuda but uh just Fun game over, you know, all around. And again, for a season that went not as expected for the CUDA, oof, uh, at least that was uh, a bright point that we see, that the CUDA had a fun night, Beastead makes an impact, and you get that little moment with the former Shark. That's, uh, it was good, but... They're officially eliminated, uh, despite all those high expectations. Will the front office have the courage to make changes behind the bench this offseason? Or are they frauds? <laughs> <laughs> uh, either way, follow Teal Town USA along with Ian, uh, Jewels, uh, Mark, and Lacey, of course, because they're uh, they're the ones super paying attention to the CUDA and the prospects. At least way more than I have the time to do, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, prize time, baby. Let's <laughs> four home games this week, and we went with attendance for the final time this season. Closest without going over, so there were four home games. Sir, what was the final tally? Do 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 do. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, across these four home games this week, there were total tickets distributed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of uh, let's be real fucking clear about that. Fifty one thousand three hundred and sixty six. So the person who air quotes won uh, is Mark Gallup, but they are somebody who's won this year. So you will be going to the what are we calling it? The consolation wheel. Yep. Uh, and so next on the list, Andrew Moore, who also won a couple weeks ago. So. <laughs> Andrew Moore, you are going to the consolation list as well. But that's no problem because that's an entry to the whatever, mega giveaway explosion sure. extravaganza, whatever. So the winner, uh, not a first-time winner, but a first-time winner this season. So I think this might be the first time we've had somebody win in multiple years, is our buddy Burge. And 
I know they're in the Discord. They may have been in this chat earlier. Um, but Burge is our winner. Nice. Shout out. Nice. So I this week has been extremely chaotic. So I don't remember if you emailed me or if you DM me on Twitter, but I will find it and I will ask you for your address. <laughs> there you go. What? Why is my do, do I seem yellow in the broadcast? No, you seem fine. I don't know. It looks weird. It looks like the color correction is off or something. Wait a minute. We're gonna. That eh, seems a little better now. I don't know. So I think it's because, you know, when we start, the sun is out. And by the time we're done, it's it, eh. either way. Uh, it should also be noted, I'm seeing it's coming across from uh, Friedman uh, looking like Hurdle is going to travel and potentially play tomorrow. Oh, good for him. Who? Uh, says <laughs> Logan Thompson, injury at practice today, not serious. Aiden Hill will travel to Vancouver, but isn't expected to be in the lineup. Dude, Vegas versus Vancouver. I will, dude. Potential like... playoff matchup, buddy. Well, dude, so Aiden Hill was hurt and Logan Thompson has to go in. Now Logan Thompson is hurt. Like, <laughs> you talk about the playoff matchups. Like, I know. Well, dude, they they only have 18 goalies there. Well, I was going to say, I know there was a lot of dialogue about, um, you know, there's been a lot of dialogue about like, oh, you know, the Vegas, it doesn't matter who's in net because they're so good. And maybe that's true. But uh, you would like to have your number one goalie available to you many people are saying many people are saying uh so all the prizes have shipped so if you haven't gotten yours yet uh it it will uh be there forthcoming uh and again i don't know if i i think i mentioned this before uh the last couple weeks they're gonna uh those boxes have might have some extras in them maybe a women of teal jersey maybe the cricket jersey a 25th anniversary shirt perhaps some towel giveaways per per chance Perchance, I don't know. I just like that word. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but the those uh, some of these extras, courtesy of my man Alden, who was uh, doing a little house cleaning, and said, "Hey, buddy, I got some stuff uh, people might be interested in." So uh, we might even run a couple of contests here at the end where we have where we take like the top three winners. We'll see. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. we maybe we uh, go all the way and uh, give out jumbo four goal undies. <sighs> Everybody see these. <laughs> oh, somebody shot that that across the the way and i was just like oh my god these are spectacular so um three games this week versus calgary at seattle versus minnesota i mean nothing for anybody to play for calgary's out seattle's out minnesota is you know for all intents and purposes out um Here's the contest for this week, people. Out of those three games, who, who, or I should say, which shark scores the first power play goal of the week? And here's the tiebreaker. So pay attention, people. We need the name of who of the player you think is going to be the first power play goal scorer of this week. Add in which game you think it's going to happen and which period. And if oof. no power play goal, uh, oh, are you thinking about oof, like uh, the spreadsheet that you're going to have to do for this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's going to be great. Um, if no power play goal, like none of this, you know, $1 Bob bullshit, none of that. None is an, is an acceptable or is an unacceptable answer. If, uh... <laughs> if no power play goal is scored by the Sharks this week, Everybody who enters gets thrown in the randomizer and uh, we'll have a winner and every, all of the people will get the extra raffle ticket. So hockeyjerk10 at gmail.com is where you email your answers. And, and just, just so we got it straight. So if I were to enter this contest, I would say, I would say, <laughs> hello, here's my entry. Uh, second period, Calgary Flames, Zetterland. Am I correct? Yep. Okay. That's my answer. So if you want to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> so email hockey jerk 10 hockey jerk, all one word one zero at gmail.com with your answers. And, uh, for the person who needs to know this, I can't remember who you are, but I did see a tweet that uh, somebody added, like they put my handle Twitter handle in there. So it's like, it said at Ian blogs, hockey at AJ underscore strong. And it said 
at hockey jerk one zero. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you poor, you poor <laughs> fellow. It's the, the, you know, his Twitter is at hockey underscore jerk. So he conflated it. It's fine. It happens. Did that person's entry end up getting in? No, it was that they tagged. They tried to hit you up with a tweet. Oh, I see. Okay. And yeah, they put at hockey jerk one zero instead of ho- at hockey underscore jerk. So uh, anyway, we'll, as always, we'll have the uh, winner announced next week. And remember, if you're outside the US 48, you cover the freight if you want the prize. And uh, there we go. Jerk, you have two games. Two games left to see if the Sharks can, in fact, hand out tacos once more to the home crowd. <laughs> um, it's versus Calgary and Minnesota. In the last 10 Calgary losses, only once did they hold their opponent to three goals. So you're kind of rooting for the Calgary game because for Minnesota, half their losses, it's been three or under allowed. So you're kind of rooting for that Calgary game on Tuesday. Oh, and by the way, for the, uh, of course, for the prize entries, uh, you got to have your submission in before the puck drop of the Calgary game. 7.30 7.30 p.m. Pacific on April 9th. There you go. Uh, so how how you uh, how you honestly feeling? Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> we Here's the thing. Let me explain something to you. I need four plus goals in one game. Yes? You need the opponent. Or I'm sorry, you need the Sharks to score four or more goals in one of their final two games at home. Correct. But But you just thank you for just doing the math for me. I only need four goals by the Sharks in one game, and they have two available to me. So, as we say, never in doubt. All right. I'm just saying, dude, if the, if the Sharks don't score four goals versus Calgary, like I'm not saying I'm counting the money. I'm just saying, you know, I'm, maybe I'm getting my calculator out. Fair. All right. So, three games this week. Again, nothing to play for. Quite literally nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. No, I mean, dude, it makes you, like, it almost makes you wonder, oh, the ratings for this should be a fucking barn burn. (laughs) I mean, just all these teams. This is one of those ones where it's like, as the schedulers got it right by having, you know, Vegas and Vancouver playing this week, the schedulers, it's just, oh, man. Like there wasn't even somebody who could come in and just beat up on the Sharks just to make a difference in like a playoff position, you know, or a a way for the Sharks to play spoiler over the last five. I mean, if they, if they beat Edmonton in Edmonton, is anything going to change unless no, no. (laughs) I was going to say, unless Edmonton somehow because they have a game in hand, three points back of Vancouver. So they're and dude, Vancouver's a mediocre five five and zero oh in their last ten. And Edmonton's not much better, six three and one. And uh, didn't Kane just get fined like earlier today? Mm-hmm. So I don't know what the hell. I you know, Sarah Valley reported a week ago that it, like it looks like he might be wearing out his welcome yet again with another franchise. So who knows? But. Either way, dude, a game in hand, three points back. I'm just saying. Definitely within among the teams, uh, among the teams that are going to the playoffs, there's still a lot of shuffling and posturing to be done. Oilers Kings in the first round. Say that happens. Who are you taking? As much as I don't want to, it's kind of hard to go against the Oilers again. You is, know? is it though? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, or- I, I, I do. I like what LA brings to the table offensively, but at the end of the day, their defense and their goaltending is still what it is. Um, Oilers say it's Oilers golden Knights. Who are you taking? Mm-hmm. Oilers. Hmm. Well, uh, you know what? Thankfully the hockey gods did get this right. This week, the Oilers do, in fact, play Vegas, right? This Wednesday, Mm -hmm. three days after, next Saturday, uh, the Oilers play Vancouver. So potential uh, little look-see there. But how huge is that game now? You know, Edmonton has a game in hand, and you're playing Vancouver. Right. And 
dude, Edmonton has two games versus the Coyotes and one versus the Sharks. You know, I'm not saying those are gimmies. I'm just saying Edmonton's path to perhaps taking the top spot of the Pacific is there. Just saying. Oh, and uh, thank you so much, Jules. I forgot to uh, mention that. Keep an eye out for the Frozen Four. Keep an eye out for Will Smith. So in the first uh, Frozen Four, it's uh, what? It's like the BU in Denver. Is that right? Uh, yes, that sounds right. And then uh, and then you get Boston College and who? I don't know, Minnesota? Iowa? Fuck, I have no idea. <laughs> I just know the that it's primed that it you know for the for the final to be BU versus Boston College, right? Could be. You know. So and oh my god. And seeing how uh the state of Massachusetts is the uh <laughs> you know the the farm system for the sharks, you know, you might want to pay attention. <laughs> you know, that's that's still amazing to me how it just all these ties through Boston just blow me away. So, um, oh, Michigan. There you go. Thank you. Okay. So, so it's the two Boston schools, Michigan and who was the other one? Denver. I want to say. Yep. Okay. So there you go. So, oh, and do we have any idea when that's happening? Is that this Thursday? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? I'm sure. Well, you know what? That's why uh, Google was invented. So if you're interested, just Google Frozen 4, and I'm sure there'll be a start time there. So uh, on Twitter, you can follow him at Hockey underscore Jerk. You can follow me at AJ underscore Strong. Please don't. Uh, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave your take in the comment section of this video. If you were not with us live, you can always help keep us commercial free by using the Super Chat option during the live shows. Better yet, use Venmo, and you can find us at Teal Town USA. And if you need that fix of Sharks Talk... It's 24-7 on the Discord and hit up at hockey underscore jerk on Twitter for your invite and find links to the social media, the podcast apps, all of that stuff included in the show notes. Find everything on tealtownusa.com and we got those three games this week so you better check out After Dark following each and every one. And uh, on a final note here, I just want to tell everybody, um, and please enjoy these final shows. Uh, we got two more. If uh, is my Am I mathing correctly? Two more? Yeah, that is correct. There you go. So um, I don't know what's going to happen next season, to be quite honest, uh, but I've reached my toxicity threshold. Um, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, dude. Who hasn't? <laughs> I, mean, I thought I could take a lot, but yikes. Um. I just want to say, you know, I've learned a lot, some of which I wish I could forget. <laughs> and I'm purposely being opaque. Um, maybe I've been too transparent and way too honest in the past. And uh, some can handle that and even thrive on it. Most people don't, they can't compartmentalize. So I think it's probably better to remove myself, which I plan to do once the regular season ends. So, cause it's just, we've gotten to the point where it's like, if you post anything remotely negative, no matter how constructive you intended, you're labeled a hater. If you post something positive, you're a shill. And quite frankly, I don't want to spend, um, any more time, uh, you know, promoting in the hopes of getting clicks. I, you know, I hate chasing likes and clicks and all of that. All I wanted to do was try to, you know, promote the show, uh, get it out there. And I'm, again, I'm just, I'm tired of the, of the bullshit to be quite honest. So, um, and quite honest, uh, or I should say to be quite honest, uh, I'm tired of having people who don't know me that don't follow me suddenly come out of nowhere just to tell me how fucking wrong I am. You know, it's like, if that's, you know, if that's where we're headed with social media, if that's, you know, what it takes to continue with shit like this. Um, I don't have the time <laughs> to be quite honest. So just, just putting it out there, just letting you know, um, as far as I'm concerned, these are the final shows for the pucknologists, uh, you know, today, next week, and the final one, uh, I think they're going to be fun. We're going to get into some updated stat packs next Sunday. And then the last show of the season is when? <laughs> the the 21st, <laughs> I want to say. 
that sounds right. somewhere in that ballpark. You know, it'll following the final game that the Sharks play in the regular season. Will again, it'll be uh, chances are it'll be a long one. Uh, we'll you know wrap up the season, what we liked for the Sharks, what we didn't like, what we hope to see in the future, what we expect to see in the future. I'm sure we'll be given our um, given our brackets a little look. See, oh shit! Now that I'm thinking about that though, didn't they move up the start? Of playoffs, like don't the playoffs start like on the twentieth? Mm, yes, I believe that's correct. Oh shit! So we're actually starting a day after. Well, you know what? Then we can give our little takes on whatever happened. And we can still show what our brackets are. So, um, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means, Ruben, but okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> enjoy the <laughs> enjoy the oh i get it i get it never mind yes i'm going the way of uh enjoy my oilers podcast next year <laughs> just kidding um anyway yeah so these last two i don't know what again i don't know what the what the future holds regarding my involvement uh with Teal Town and everything like that but uh and and not to say that the puck knowledge just won't come back in some way shape or form next season uh i'm just saying that i likely uh won't be involved or if i am it'll be very <laughs> on the on the peripheral so anyway uh we're gonna have a fun last couple of shows here see what happens um maybe we transition to a weekly cuda podcast you know what i don't see a whole lot of toxic bs when it comes to the cuda so you know what? Maybe that is something to consider. Uh, I'll tell you this. I'm not doing it if they still have the same coaching staff. <laughs> that we, I, I want to see that personally change because I, I think uh, I'm not saying McCarthy isn't a good guy and a good dude. I'm just saying I don't think he's the coach the Cuda need at this time. I think they need something something different. So, uh, Jerk. How you uh, how you feeling about these uh, last couple of shows? You think we're gonna think we're gonna have a good time? To, is your hockey playing schedule going to like throw a wrench into any of that? Um, I don't think that it should, but now I'm a little nervous. So oh, you check. fucking guy! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you son I, of a bitch! I, I don't it's just hold on. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse I, me while I whip this out. I'm gonna double check. I don't think it should cause an issue. So, uh, so for oh Jesus Christ. So April fourteenth, which is a week from today, today, today. Interesting. Okay, I think. Oh, that changes things. My, uh, <laughs> we might have to consult somebody. It looks like the schedule has been changed dramatically. Ruh -roh. But uh, fear not, because uh, we're gonna make it work. All right. So there you go. Uh, and yeah, enjoy the 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 last ones here for at least now and uh again we'll we'll see what happens in the future uh any last words from you good sir uh i'm hungry <laughs> dude no doubt dude i swear to god shout ever... out i I'm, I'm gonna put it out there no free ads yeah unless unless they want to hook it up because mm, i'm just saying uh -oh. but uh me. if you're in if you live in vegas or you visit vegas or whatever teriyaki madness all right that's have you ever had um uh have you ever had one of those days where you like you swear like you fucking just destroy half a pizza and like five minutes later you're like, why am I still hungry? Yep. Dude, I I can't that was that was uh that was today for me. Okay, I hear so, you. So I'm a little hungry myself. So anyway, uh we will see you all next Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific. Thank you so much for listening as always, and good night. Have a pleasant tomorrow.